This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and welcome to part 3 of our Skylake editing PC build upgrade video. That's the PC right behind me. If you haven't checked out part 1 and 2, they'll be linked in the description below. But in this episode, we'll be replacing some hardware. Uh, I'll finally get around to doing proper cable management with proper cables and also doing some fan replacement because the whole idea has shifted to going as silent as possible. So let's begin. Now, before we move on, let me explain uh, or give you a rundown of my reasoning behind using the Skylake platform as an editing or dedicated for editing machine. Uh, and many of you have commented in the past saying an X99, the six core would be a lot more suitable, extra rendering power. And while yes, I agree with that, the Skylake uh, platform is still very capable. And let me tell you why I sort of ditched my 3930K six core chip uh, for this Skylake processor. So what I started with was an X79 platform with a 3930K processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, followed by five hard drive so I can access our entire archive. And this followed by only two SSDs for the operating system and one for the video projects drive. That system ran an SLI with dual 980 Ti's, which was awesome, but all this hardware was putting out a ton of heat, especially those hard drives making computer anything but silent. So here's where an idea for an SSD only powered system was in the works, utilizing an Intel 6700K processor with this gigabyte board, triple OCZ Vector 180 SSDs, and uh, the star of the show was the Intel 750 SSD, which I wanted to use as a boot drive and house my video editing software, but I couldn't do that with my X79 board because the X79 board does not support NVMe SSD as a boot drive. I also added the NZXT Q Plus for lighting, which turned out to be super awesome. And finally, I had a two terabyte hard drive, which was added to offload some of the backup uh, before it was moved onto the NAS. And this is where the latest upgrade comes into the equation. So with the addition of these 12 volt RGB headers on the new AC motherboards, this is the Maximus 8 Hero Alpha, I am able to get rid of the Hue Plus lighting completely while still being able to uh, route LED strips inside the case and have full control of what color I want to choose and etc. I also realized that having SLI for a sort of video editing system is pretty pointless because the Adobe Media Encoder does not utilize both GPUs when it's rendering videos. Plus, the 6700K only has 16 now uh, PCI Express 3.0 lanes, which means with both graphics cards and my PCI Express SSD, it was really not optimal to have all these all this hardware and there might be some bottleneck at some point if all this hardware is being utilized at the same time. So one of the graphics cards is out of there. But I'm still utilizing all of my OCZ SSDs along with the Intel 750 and now a four terabyte hard drive, again, just for archiving and a one terabyte Trion 150 SSD, um, which is the new SSD from OCZ for all my games. The ketchup and mustard cables are gone, replaced with CableMod red and black set, uh, just so I can color match with the motherboard theme. And so, the assembly begins. And so here's the final system with the new Avexia Core RAM that looks pretty awesome with this dynamic illumination. But I gotta be honest, this lighting behavior is very random and I wish I could just either disable it or either keep it just static. But at least this system is now equipped with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM and I can already feel the huge benefit of this extra RAM when opening up video projects and etc. 16 gigabytes, never again. 
Now I know the red and black color scheme has been overdone to death, but I didn't want to fully sort of derail off the color coordination with the motherboard. So I decided to do something a little bit different and add a very unique accented color for this PC. And so what I did was add cable mod LED strips, which are RGB that connect directly to the motherboard RGB headers. And I was able to achieve this very unique purple and red illumination for the interior that to me stands out from million of other red builds. So now moving on to the airflow and I decided to replace all fans from the case and also the cooler. So for intake, I'm using Fractal Design Venturi 140 millimeter fans, two of them. And these are the high airflow models and deliver amazing airflow and they're also super quiet. And then for the NZXT X61 CPU cooler, I'm using two high static pressure Venturi fans as well uh, because the stock fans were just way too loud. For exhaust, the Be Quiet Silent Wings 2 fan, which is the quietest fan that I've ever worked with. It's amazing, moves quite a lot of air. And so now onto cable management uh, that is very easy going with modular cables and plenty of open area at the back of the case to clean everything up. Now, thanks to plenty of fan headers on the motherboard itself and uh, pretty good software control of those fans, I actually didn't use the fan hub at all that came with the case just to clear up some cables and minimize that cable clutter. And now I think I have the quietest editing PC that I've ever built for myself uh, with proper hardware configuration that isn't being bottlenecked by anything else in this case. Uh, the CPU is overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz. I'm running about 33 degrees Celsius on idle and about 66 to 67 at 100% load, which is pretty awesome. But uh, now let me show you exactly how quiet the system is. Okay, guys, this is how loud the machine is. And again, just to come back to this idea of, uh, you know, 6700K being not your optimal CPU for video editing. And while I agree that an X99 platform with a six core processor and just the same amount, uh, same amount of RAM would yield better rendering performance, my thinking behind this upgrade was to focus on fast storage first, because that grants you immediate workflow improvements because everything just loads so much faster uh, when everything's being accessed just from solid state drives. And and eventually, when I move on to the X99 platform, all of that solid state drives and solid state storage will migrate with me onto this new system. But so far, I've been very happy with how this Skylake editing PC has been treating me and behaving around me with power efficiency, temperature stability, overclockability, and finally speed, all of which are on my satisfactory points. But it will continue to pump out these pixels that you watch now until my next editing PC upgrade. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video upgrade. Uh, let me know if there was something that you would have done differently if you were sort of in charge of this sort of system. I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.